Oh snap, grandma's slow cooker chili is actually killing you. All right, hear me out. I'm gonna make some sense of that, all right? I just had to make this a little bit light before I get into the scary stuff. I'm talking about lectins today. Lectins are a very, very hot topic that people hit me with questions about all of the time. Basically, all lectins are, are a form of protein that encourages the binding of certain molecules. Basically, what it does is it causes a certain sugar molecule to bind to the membrane of another cell. So since it is sugar binding, it means that lectins attach to carbohydrates. The purpose of a lectin attaching to a carbohydrate is so that they can communicate with other molecules in the body better. That's all we're trying to do. So lectins cause these cells to basically clump up. Let's just simply put it like that. Because they're clumped up, it's easier for them to communicate without the involvement of the immune system. Normally, when cells communicate, there is a small involvement of the body's immune system. So lectins are actually a positive thing. But the negatives come into the equation when we start talking about how lectins are digested. You see, because lectins are so big and because there's so many things bound together, they run through our digestive system like an absolute maniac, like a raging bull just totally destroying things. Let me explain it like this. Inside your intestinal tract, you have these things called villi. Villi are basically like little finger-like things that stick out of your intestinal tract, right? So you've got your small intestine and it's got these small little fingers that absorb nutrients. So food comes along and it goes in between the villi, okay? And that's how it absorbs. But when you have lectins involved, lectins cause the molecules to bind together. So now your villi have no longer become an absorption mechanism, they've become bowling pins and the lectins are a bowling ball. And it comes through and it pummels them and it destroys them. When that happens, you've inhibited digestion because you no longer have the villi to absorb the nutrients. So now instead of having all of this surface area to absorb nutrients, you have this. So you have just completely eradicated the chance of absorbing some really good nutrients. That's where lectins cause a big problem and that's where they get such a bad rap. So to add insult to injury, once the villi is damaged, you now have trauma. Trauma equals inflammation. Inflammation equals antibodies. Antibodies equal a myriad of other issues that occur within the intestinal tract, but it gets even worse. Since you've caused damage and since you've caused trauma and since you've now caused inflammation, you have opened yourself up to those lectins getting into the bloodstream through what's known as a leaky gut. Now, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on a leaky gut because you've probably heard about it. Basically, it causes an opening so that things can leak through the intestinal tract and into the bloodstream that ordinarily would not. This means things like lectins. These lectins barely belong in the digestive system, let alone in the bloodstream. So now that these lectins are floating around in the bloodstream, we have inflammation being triggered up everywhere, but we also have another issue. Lectins really have a nice affinity for insulin receptors and a nice affinity for leptin, that's leptin with a P, receptors. What does that mean? It means that lectins can ultimately lead to diabetes and diabetes-like symptoms, or at least insulin resistance, but it can also lead to leptin resistance, which is what dictates whether your metabolism goes fast or slow. Leptin communicates with your brain, and I know that's confusing because you have lectin and leptin, so don't get too caught up on that. Basically, all it means is that if these lectins get through your intestinal tract, they could really funk some stuff up. Now, normally a little bit of damage to those villi is normal, right? So if you consume food, it's gonna break it down a little bit, but it actually encourages them to grow back stronger. But when you have lectins, they damage them so bad, they don't grow back very well. And continually, the lectins basically blunt the regrowth of the villi. So now you have the situation where the villi is damaged and it can't regrow. So can you cause permanent damage to your gut? Not really, but you can cause long-term enough damage that it is going to be hard to absorb nutrients for quite some time. But that's enough negative, scary stuff about lectins because we really have to talk the cold, hard truth here. Again, 30% of the foods that we consume have lectins. Lectins are there as a good mechanism for our cells to communicate. So then why are they so bad? Well, they're only bad if you're consuming a ton of them. Okay, we really just need to consume them in moderation because a small amount can actually be good. You see, a small amount can activate what's known as the complementary immune system, which can actually help fight pathogens. So lectins can work advantageously towards good health with your immune system, but again, just in moderation. And a lot of it comes down to how you cook the foods that contain lectins. You're not going out and eating raw beans, are you? I sure hope not, because if that's the case, then we have some other things to talk about. But the thing is, lectins are prevalent in raw foods and if you're not cooking them all the way. 
So when you look at beans, you simply want to be soaking them for a long time before you cook them, which if you look at the package, usually it tells you to do so to begin with. So soak your beans, soak your grains, soak your legumes, soak your lentils, and then cook them all the way through at a moderately high temperature. The other thing that causes excess release of lectins is cooking them slowly. So if you slow cook beans or you slow cook chili, you're going to have more lectins than if you soak your beans and then cook them at high heat like you're supposed to. It's plain and simple. You really should just follow the directions that are on the label and you're probably not gonna have that much of an issue with lectins. But also, you may not wanna be consuming copious amounts of beans to begin with. One, you have other things that are going on, like your body lacks the enzymes to break down a lot of the proteins and beans to begin with. But you also have a family to be concerned with and I don't think that they want you eating a lot of beans day in and day out. So anyway, there you have it. That's why lectins are not as bad as you think they are, but they are bad if you let them be bad. You just have to know the science, you just have to know the details. And as always, make sure that you comment and let me know what other videos you want to see. This is a perfect example of a video that a lot of people wanted to see, and here we have it. So keep it locked in on the Thomas DeLauer channel, and I will see you in the next video. Go easy on those beans. Tell your grandma to chill out too. <laughs>